Okay, today we're going to learn section 15.3. It's about tangents and circumscribed angles. You can see the learning target there. You want to know the relationship between tangents, circumscribed angles, and arc measure. A couple of definitions. We have a tangent to a circle. This is when you have a line like this that is touching the circle. It's intersecting the circle in one point. That's considered tangent. You can see it's tangent right at that point B, and that's called the point of tangency. We also have a couple other things here. We have ray BA, which is right here. This is ray BA. And then we also have BA as a tangent segment. So that would just be, you know, from B to A. So you guys know, you guys already know what segments are. All right, so there's a relationship here. Whenever the line is tangent to the circle, there's a there's going to be a line or there's going to be the radius here and it turns out that it's going to be perpendicular to the line that's tangent to the circle so you'll always be able to create a little 90 degree angle as long as it's perpendicular or as long as it's tangent to the circle and of course that's what this says it says line a b is perpendicular to segment o p which is the radius of the circle all right, so these two theorems uh, basically say that. The first one is saying that if you have a line that is tangent to the circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius. So that's what we were just looking at. But the converse is also true. You remember the converse is when we switch the if and the then. So we can say that if a line is perpendicular uh, to the radius of the circle, uh, then we would know that it actually is tangent to the circle. So we would know that it touches the circle in just that one point, not more points. Or So that's a way to prove that, you know, there's a tangent happening there. All right, the next three slides, I thought you could kind of pause and read on your own because you kind of need to think about it a little bit. It's kind of, it's not necessarily a proof, it's just getting you to think, why, why is that, that, you know, this would be perpendicular, you know, that this segment would be perpendicular to that line. Okay, so I'll let you read that second slide as well. Again, just pause and think about it a little bit. All right, let's start finding some values. So let's say that ED is tangent to circle OD. So a lot of times we say we describe the circle by the center. And so that center or that circle OD, my students always got mad, you know, that we use, you know, the picture of the circle like that. And then we'd use the letter O, but it's just, it's fairly common. So ED is tangent, so find the value of x. Well, if it is tangent, that means that creates a 90 degree angle there. So, and we know this is a triangle, so we can just add the angles together. So 90 plus x plus 38, and we know that that equals 180. So then we can just solve for x. So that would be x plus, and that would be 128 equals 180 and then we can just solve for x. So 180 minus uh, 128, so that should be what, 52. All right, and I'll just kind of include a little bit nicer version of it typed. I just wanted to be able to solve it live and then I'll have a little nicer looking slide there. All right, the next question is, is example, or is segment ML, this is segment ML right here, is it tangent to the circle at point L? So is this the point of tangency right here to the circle? Well, let's kind of see. We have all the sides of the triangle shown, so what we can do is we can use the converse, you know, of the Pythagorean theorem. So we can say, hey, uh, we can square the two smaller sides of the triangle 
and see if that actually equals the third side squared. And it turns out that this does, so we can just, you know, square these. So we got 49 plus and then 24 squared, 576. And then we know this one is 625. So then when we add those two together, that's also 625. So whenever we have three sides of a triangle that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, then that means that it's a right triangle. And if it's a right triangle, then we know that the right angle is across from the biggest side. So that means this would be the right angle. So this is a way to show, yes, that in, then it is tangent. So because we have the converse of the theorem that says, hey, if you have if you have a perpendicular angle there with the radius and that line, then that shows that it's tangent, you know, at that spot. So that was using the converse of the theorem or the converse theorem. All right. And this just has the same thing, just a little bit nicer version. All right. The next thing is called a circumscribed angle. This is the angle that's right here. It's an angle that's formed by two rays. So these are the two rays. And the rays uh, form a common endpoint that are tangent. So this is the common endpoint. And they're tangent to the circle. So see how they touch the circle in one spot on each side. So this angle right here is the angle we're talking about. Circumscribed angle. Okay, a special relationship is formed here. So the circumscribed angle right here and its associated central angle, so this is the associated central angle, turns out that those two angles are supplementary. So that means that, of course, you add them up and they equal 180. Now you might say, well, why? I mean, we're going to use that to find measures, you know, but why would that be? Well, I think the, the quickest or the easiest way to think about it is that this forms a quadrilateral, so this is a four-sided figure, right? And you remember that a quadrilateral has the sum of the interior angles is 360 degrees. Well, remember we just said that this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, so there's 180 right there, and that leaves 180 left over for the other two angles, the two that are in red. So that's really just kind of a quick, hey, why does this, you know, why do they add up to be 180? All right. All right, let's start finding some measures here. So these are the two angles that we're talking about. This is a circumscribed angle and this is the central angle that's associated with it. So find the value of x. So all we do is we just say, hey, they're supplementary. So we just add them together and we say they equal 180 and then we just uh, subtract 117. And so then we get x is equal to, and that would be 63. All right, and there's just a little nicer version of the same thing. All right, so same, just tiny bit, you know, more involved algebra, or a little bit anyways. So this is the circumscribed angle, and this is the central angle. So we can add them together and we can set it equal to 180. So we can add those like terms. So 4x equals 180. And then we can divide by 4. So that would be 45. Now we have to make sure we answer the question. So it says, hey, what's the measure of angle P? So the measure of angle P would be 45 degrees. So, and then what some people do is when they have measure of angle P, they just say it's 45. Okay. So, but uh, it is, it is, uh, well, I'm going to say 45 degrees. I might upset some people. All right. So I think that'll do it for us. So here's a little nicer version of the same thing. And this is what I'm planning for the weekend, just kind of looking at the map to figure out kind of exciting places that I want to go. So hopefully you can figure out some things. Like right now I'm in one of the 
one of the bedrooms or den. I'm hoping maybe this weekend I can wander out, maybe, you know, get over to the other bathroom or maybe, um, maybe the other bedroom would be cool. So hopefully you're planning some really fun getaways as well.